Good evening and welcome to the Holy Mass at St. Gregory the Great. My name is Ronnie Varish and I'll be your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant will be Father Rob, assisted by Deacon Greg. An important message from our stewardship committee is in the bulletin regarding the latest update on the diocesan bankruptcy. Please be sure to read this. Next Sunday is our Knights of Columbus pancake breakfast. Come and enjoy an all-you-can-eat breakfast and pancake with family and friends. Please read the bulletin for important information on our new family of parishes mass schedule, first penance and first communion registration, the November outreach to collect ramen noodle packets, the great dinner auction and cash raffle, our Christmas craft show, and much more. The readings for today's liturgy are located at number 1286 in the Gather Book. At this time, I ask you to please stand and welcome those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. To prepare ourselves to enter into these mysteries of God's love for us, his people, let's humbly acknowledge our sins and let's ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent by the Father to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. A great king am I, says the Lord of hosts and my name will be feared among nations. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and of your blessing I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way, and have caused many to falter by your instruction. You have made void the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. I, therefore, have made you contemptible and base before all the people. Since you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your decisions, have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
in you, Lord, I have found my peace. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. In you, not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I busy not myself with great things, nor with things to supply for me. quieted my soul like a wind child like a wind child on its mother's lap oh, is my soul within me in you reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we, are, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved, had you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you. We proclaim to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received not a human word, but as it is truly said, the word of God which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says today that the greatest among you must be your servant. And isn't it amazing that this introduction is given to us as we approach the feast of Christ the King? It's an incredible lesson offered to us at the end of our liturgical year in three weeks. Jesus teaches us humility as the way to greatness. It's not the way of our world. And what is this humility? Essentially, humility is that virtue that restrains the movement of our mind towards some excellence particularly restraining our minds from thinking one is greater than the one true God. Simply put, humility helps us to experience our dependence upon God. And Jesus is that great model of humility and service. All we have to do is go to the scene at Gethsemane in the garden. And it's through prayer that Jesus gets the strength to let go of his will and to submit to the will of the Father. Not my will be done, but yours. It's at that awful event of the crucifixion, which was death penalty back then. And it was commonly used for criminals at the time of the Roman Empire. And Jesus was executed as a common criminal. And yet, it's through his death he won life for all of us. That the Son of Man came to serve and not be served. The Pharisees had forgotten what that true call of being a servant of God. And Jesus criticizes them, trying to lead them back to what ministry is all about. It's not about being esteemed, being loved, being honored, being praised, being preferred over others or above others. 
we see in Jesus true service to the truth of being humiliated, being despised, suffering, and rebuked for the sake of the truth. Jesus is reminding the Pharisees about purifying their desires and their intentions. And that could be a reminder for each one of us here. There's a Pharisee, too, in each one of us that regularly falls into that trap of being led to pride. And Jesus says today, therefore, do and observe all the things that they tell you but don't follow their example. They preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens to carry the load, and they lay it upon people's shoulders, but they won't lift a finger to move them. All of their works are performed to be seen. I hope and pray daily that through my own humility in what I say, what I do, what I preach, allows those virtues to influence the actions of my life. And that everything done is done in true humility, giving praise and thanks to God. It's not mine. It's God working through me and through each one of us. So I hope and pray that Jesus will deliver us from those temptations of that vice of pride and draw each of us closer into that virtue of true humility. St. Augustine was the bishop of Hippo, and he knew his brother tree, priests were erring and falling and failing to be faithful to their call. And so he taught them humility, a willingness to generously share the gifts that they have been given as ones created in that likeness and image of God while knowing their own limitations. My dear friends, those are the words that penetrate our hearts today. And St. Augustine simply reminded them about humility as the remedy for pride. The source of that antidote, humility, is Jesus Christ. How? God cured us by his own humility, by showing us through that self-emptying of Jesus Christ the path to reclaim our true identity. And as God's beloved and reordering our motives, we look for things not of this world, but in God alone our servant king who came into this world to save each one of us and calls us to do the same for one another. May we strive to follow that call, to follow Christ, and to live out that virtue of true humility not for others to see what we do, but for others to know God's love. Hello. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I bless one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord our God, we come, and we come before you humbly as we place our prayers before you. For Pope Francis, may he continue to have good health and strength to lead his people to see Jesus as he really is. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they govern with wisdom, understanding, and special care for the poor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for, to, we pray for all the people of God may we move to the next phase of the Synod on synodality, listening to the promptings of the Holy Spirit regarding changes in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Palestine. May hatred be removed from all their hearts and peace return to their nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, as we approach election day, may we better understand the issues and how the gospel compels us to respond as faithful citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, whom we pray for in a special way, Ron Kinsel, and for our own prayers and intentions, which we now offer in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. Joan Z. Doyle, William Taylor, Joan Bar Mangan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our oh God, we ask you to hear these prayers humbly placed before you, that you may touch them with your goodness. We ask this always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our ushers will now take up the collection our gift bearers are the Patterson family.
given human hands and made us Cleanse me from my sins. Nice and warm. Thank you. Thank you. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and you arranged the changing of the times and the seasons. You formed us in your own image and you set us over the whole world and its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so now with the angels we praise you and in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, that by sending down your Spirit, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed, and entering willingly into his passion, he took bread. He gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once again, giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all of our faithful departed during this month of November, those that you called to yourself from this world, Grant that they may be united with your Son in a death like his, but come to share one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters that have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all of those that have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints that have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. It's at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always freed from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other that same sign of Christ's peace. My friends, this is Jesus who humbly gave his life for each of us. This is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed the body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for the receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements today. The new family mass schedule has been posted in the bulletin and on each parish website. The new mass schedule will start the first weekend of Advent with the Vigil Mass. Please make sure you take a few moments to review. For those that have intentions scheduled for masses that are no longer taking place, Please know that your request will still be honored. A staff member from the parish office will contact you to reschedule your intention. Thank you for your patience as well as adjustment to these changes. Cash raffle tickets are being sold in the vestibule this weekend. Please stop by. The donation is only $20 a ticket to get a chance to win. The raffle benefits the great dinner auction. And immediately following this Mass, since it's first Saturday, we will celebrate the Sacrament of Anointing for anybody in need of healing, spiritually, mentally, physically. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace and in joy to serve the Lord and one another. Amen. And let's pray for our prayer for renewal for our universal church, for our diocesan church, for our family of parishes, for our parish for our domestic church in each one of our homes and each of us. In every age, O oh God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news Celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and to guide our amazed journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bless
Spirit, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. 